you can get one of the best shields in Tears of the Kingdom very early on, and we've got way more items and tips in this video that will really help you out as you explore Hyrule. Although, there's actually something you can already get before you touch the mainland. During the tutorial on the Great Sky Island, you can already grab yourself a pair of Archaic Warm Greaves, a piece of armor with built-in cold resistance. While you can of course give yourself some temporary resistance to the cold by preparing meals with spicy peppers, having a piece of armor with cold resistance means you're not limited by a timer. To find this piece, you'll want to head over here on the east side of the island where one of the shrines that unlock your abilities is also located. You'll actually want to do that first to unlock the ascend ability as we can use that underneath this piece of tree bark to get on top of it. And then just enter the hollowed out tree to grab the chest with the warm greaves in them. Now the downside of these is that you cannot upgrade them so if you want a better version head to retail village over here on the map where you can buy the snow coil armor. And you'll want to visit the retail anyway for an amazing unlock that will make traversing the world a lot easier. We'll get to that in a bit because you'll need your paraglider to use it. And you want to get your paraglider as soon as possible anyway as it lets you immediately grab yourself one of the best shields in the game, the Hylian shield. So if you don't have the paraglider yet, head to Lookout Landing, talk to Pura, she's on this platform on the north side of the camp. She'll tell you to go towards the castle, which is hard to miss, so just follow the road until you reach this giant gatehouse, and then you can use Ascent to get on top of it and talk to the captain. Then head back to Lookout Landing, talk to Pura again to learn about the town sanctuary, and after that, you can find her at the foot of the Skyview Tower, where she'll hand you the paraglider. Then, we want to head back in the direction of Hyrule Castle, so either use the tower and glide there, or walk back following the road. Once you get past the first gatehouse, so where you met the captain, glide from here, here to the other side, then walk across the ledge and drop down here and then here. You are now at the entrance of a very well hidden cave so continue on inside until you see a circle of torches. Use these to light one of your arrows on fire and then shoot the big brazier in the middle and a chest containing the Hylian shield will appear from the ground. It has an incredible defense rating of 90 which is miles higher than anything you'll find for the first couple of hours in the game. However, do keep in mind that while strong, the Hylian shield shield can still break. But luckily, if it does, you can buy a new one in Hateno Village, which is over here on the map. You do have to complete a quest chain first though, after which you can buy a new Hylian shield for 3000 rupees. I left the link in the description to an article from Attack of the Fanboy with details on the quest chain and other info. And by the way, did you notice this NPC with the signpost on your way out of the castle? Meet Addison, the easiest way to make rupees in the game I found so far. You'll encounter him in many spots in Hyrule, usually next to the road, and he always has the same problem. He's afraid to drop the signpost of his beloved company company president, but we're here to help him out with that. Wherever you find him, there's always a stash of construction materials on hand, so use these to construct a support for the post. Usually a wooden bar under the sign will do the trick, but some later ones require you to be a bit more creative. When you're sure the post is steady, tell Addison to let go, and if the sign stays upright, talk to him again. He'll thank you for your help each time, with the reward always consisting of 20 rupees, a meal, and a useful item like a bomb flower or a voucher for a free night's rest at a stage. Stable. Again, so far the puzzles to help Addison have been really easy, so it's pretty much 23 rupees every time you see him. Which goes a long way towards getting you some new armor, especially considering how often you run into him. And of course, if you liked the video so far, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more Zelda videos like this one. So like I already said, one place you can buy yourself some new gear is Rito Village. This is also where the game recommends you start your main quest, and while you're of course free to explore Hyrule however you want, I do recommend going to the Rito Village first. It's going to be cold, but if you grab the warm griefs from earlier, you should be fine, and then you just follow the map markers until you reach the village. You'll then be asked to go on a pretty lengthy quest with Tulin, which ends in one of the game's major temples, but by completing it, you'll gain access to the power of the Sage of Wind. This lets you create a gust of wind on command, which is super useful to give yourself some extra forward momentum with your paraglider. I found traversing Hyrule much more enjoyable with this upgrade unlocked, which is why I recommend grabbing it as early as possible. But even if you decide to take a different path, the one thing you definitely want to do is activate any shrine you come across. Because even if you don't plan on completing them right away, an activated shrine will allow you to fast travel to it from any location. And you can even tell the difference between activated shrines and completed shrines on the map as the inside icon is yellow if you haven't done the challenge yet, and blue 
if you already got the reward. And if you want to fast travel back to a city or stable, then you should also keep an eye out for shrines. Because while these major landmarks almost always have a shrine close to them, they don't have their own dedicated fast travel spots. And you want a way to quickly return to these places as they often have a fireplace where you can cook some food. And here you can apply a new trick that wasn't in Breath of the Wild, which is cooking from a recipe. You want to stock up on meals anyway to restore your heart, but if you have a specific dish in mind, you can save yourself the trouble of selecting all the ingredients manually. If you click select for recipe, you'll get a list of all recipes you've previously made that included that ingredient. If you have all other ingredients in your inventory as well, selecting the recipe immediately places all required ingredients in your hand so you can drop them in a pan and watch Link cook. This also works for elixir, so the potions you brew from critters and monster parts. And if you want to cook meals with a specific buff in mind, like spicy dishes to give you more cold resistance, you can actually increase the duration of the buff by adding more peppers. A dish with four mushrooms and one pepper will grant you cold resistance for four minutes and 30 seconds, whereas cooking one mushroom with four peppers gives you a cold resistance buff that lasts for 10 minutes and 30 seconds. These will also show up as separate recipes in your cookbook to make it even more convenient. And if you have trouble coming up with recipes, I'll leave a link with some useful ones in the video description. On top of that, there's even somewhat of a shortcut for weapon fusing as well. Because as you might have noticed, most base weapons in the game aren't that good, but you will find a lot of materials that increase the damage of a weapon when you use your fuse power on them. To quickly make the best weapon possible, select an unfused weapon with the right D-pad button. Then hold up to select the material and then press Y to shorten by fuse attack power. This will help you quickly find your most powerful fusion materials, which you can then drop on the ground with X and attach them to your current weapon to make something even stronger. If you want to up your attack power even more, there's an armor piece you can grab early on that will give you an overall attack boost. To the northeast of Lookout Landing is a cave that contains the chest piece of the Barbarian armor, which increases the damage of your attacks while wearing it. So make your way over to this bridge here and then look for the cave entrance to the left over here on the map. Make sure to either bring a hammer or even better some explosives as we'll need to clear out some rocks to grab the armor. Also be careful not to step into the central pool of the cave unless you want a boss fight. In order to grab the chest piece we're going to look for this cluster of rocks on the wall, blow it up, enter the cave behind it and grab the armor from the chest. Now I actually knew where to find this armor because an NPC named Mishi marked it on my map. You don't have to talk to her to get the armors, but if you want them marked on the map, it might be useful to do so anyway. I ran into her close to the woodland stable over here on the map, and she also gave me the location of another armor piece that will really help with climbing. Considering how much of that you'll be doing when you're out exploring, it's really nice to simply put on a piece of armor and give yourself a permanent speed boost when climbing. For this piece, we're headed northwest of Lookout Landing. Pretty much as soon as you cross Garrock Bridge over here on the map, you can find the end entrance to the cave. There is a Hinox on the bridge though, so either sneak past it or fight it if you feel confident. Once you reach the cave, there'll be two of these creepy worms waiting for you. They're very easy to take out. If you get close to them, they expose their weak spot, so shoot it once to expose it and then smash it with a melee weapon. Then continue up and make your way through the waterfall to find a chest with the climbing gear, which will increase your overall climbing speed when worn. And I did a quick test to see if that means you can also climb further without running out of stamina, but but that is not the case, at least not with one piece of the armor equipped. I climbed up this rock with and without the chest piece, and as you can see, both times I reached the top, my stamina is at half a bar left. Still though, Link's base climbing speed isn't exactly stellar, so being able to increase it is still really nice. If there are any tips or items we missed, let us know in the comments and subscribe as we got more Tears of the Kingdom videos coming your way. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and if the next one is already up, you can watch it by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.